We continue to preview the 2024 college football season, and today our stop is Baldwin, Kansas, as we get to visit with Miguel Regalado, who is the head football coach for the Baker Wildcats. Second season back with the program, second season at the helm. Coach, 9-3 and three last year, and let's let's talk about 2023 for just a moment. Another play, playoff appearance for the program. Tri-champs in the Heart South, a very, very tough Heart South, I might add. And you yes. also were recognized as co-coach of the year, so... Tell us a little bit about last season as we get started. Whirlwind, Joey. It was a complete whirlwind. Um, you know, I my official first day on the job was February, and um, it kind of happened really quickly. Uh, Jason Thorne, who I worked with here uh, for many years, calls me in the way back from Christmas vacation. I'm, I'm in the family in the car with the family. He says, "Coach, I'm about to take a job at Mississippi State." I told our athletic director, "I think that they should reach out to you." I thought he was joking, and um, you know, I, it was just a, a blessing to come back to Baker University. I, I spent nine years here. We had a lot of success. I was around some really incredible coaches and players. And so the opportunity to come back here and become the head coach was something I never thought would happen. So that was very surreal, but very quick. And so, uh, you know, our program had come off a very, uh, you know, uh, uh, tough season. And it's not common for Baker to have a tough season. So it was a little bit different. Uh, it wasn't quite the Baker football team I was used to being around in the past. So we kind of had to get that juice back a little bit and kind of get that that swagger. And, you know, what I told him, Joey, in our first team meeting by way of Zoom when I was still in Dubuque, Iowa, is I don't know if you guys understand at Baker University, you're supposed to be in the playoffs every year. You're supposed to win. You're supposed to win rings. You're supposed to graduate. You're supposed to have a great GPA. You're, and there's a lot of expectations that go with being at Baker. And I think we kind of lost track of that a little bit. And so uh, very, the staff came together very quickly. I knew exactly who I wanted to hire. One of them was already here, uh, Tucker Pauly, our defense coordinator has done a fantastic job ever since he's been here as a student assistant uh, for us and worked his way up. Jake Morris played for me from 2010 to 2013, was a, a conference player of the year as our offense coordinator. So we had three Baker guys in place, ready to get going. And then it was just a matter of, getting this team to believe that they were good again. Um, don't get me wrong, Joy, we, we were not overly talented in 23. This is a much more talented team in 24, but there were some good football players there. They just needed to, to work a little bit harder in the spring, be in a little bit better shape coming into camp, which means having a great summer, which we did, and then just playing as hard a football as you can normally, Joey. Baker will we'll go into a season saying, okay, we're going to roll this team. We're going to roll this team. We got a tough team here. We got to be ready for it. Every game was we better play our best because we're not that talented. And um, we made a very critical move of, of moving a young man that you and I were talking about before we went live was Truman Julesgard was, was playing defensive back. Truman goes to quarterback. All of a sudden we have the offensive player of the year in the conference. Uh, Coach Polly has the defense player in the year in the conference and Cannon Carnet linebacker. Our special forces or special teams were, were spectacular. And they just gutted out win after win. Uh, you know, there's a game in there that that I still disappoints me. I, I don't think that we very much showed up for, for the Benedictine game. It was very cold. And I think Benedictine handled that weather way tougher than we did. And uh, so that was a championship game that I think we let slip away. Things kind of worked out for us in the end. And uh, we went into the playoffs, played a very tough Louisiana Christian team, uh, pulled away in the second half, and then went up and realized we're not there yet and, and played a, a Georgetown football team that was just, frankly, much better than us, much more physical, and let us know how far we had to come. <laughs> I, You know, I, I remember that Saturday, the, the Benedictine game, and yeah, the weather was... Uh, it was interesting all the way around that particular weekend. But, you, you, again, you double up on a Louisiana Christian team in the playoffs that uh, was a, a very good team. Yes. And so 9-3 and three overall. You talk about the whirlwind, too, Coach, uh, coming in in February. However, you come back to a place that you know, a place that, that you'd spent time with. And you mentioned that a little bit. Was there a familiarity to it, even though the, the, you know, the names – the, the faces are a little bit different and, and you get used to that, but you know, it, it, it has that feel that you've been there. You know, what can happen here? Did it fall into a familiarity or was it just a, a new, new venture? Very familiar, just a different point of view when you're, when you're, you know, people say this all the time. It's kind of a cliche, Joey, that when you're sitting in the head coach's seat, it's just different. And it is, it's, it's different. 
um, I dealt with some things that I had didn't have to deal with when I was at Baker as a coordinator for many years uh, under Mike Grossner. Uh, coach Thorne and I as coordinators had the best job in the country. We got to coach mm -hmm. football and that's it. And there's no better job than that. And then all of a sudden you come back and you're the head coach. You're not coaching as much football as you were back in those days. And so there was a, a great familiarity, as you said, uh, when I was here, just a different point of view and some different things that that you didn't have to deal with when you were a coordinator. That different seat on the bench <laughs> does get exactly a little right. bit Perfect way to put it. <laughs> I understand. Well, let's talk about the offense. Let's talk about 2024 then. We've already mentioned Truman Jules guard. Let me throw out some numbers, Coach, which I'm sure you're already familiar with. 2,520 passing yards, total offense of more than 3,000, by the way, 60-plus percent passing completion. That's a fantastic number anytime you get above that 60% mark. 20 touchdown passes to just five interceptions, 765 rushing yards, eight more rushing touchdowns. Oh, and he caught a pass for 28 yards, too. So he was all, all around, uh, picked up a, a lot of uh, not only all-purpose yards, total yards as well. I know there are more players on the field there in orange and black jerseys than just Jules Guard, but it's a good place to start for offense. Yeah, I, you know, no matter where you're at, if you don't have a quarterback, you're, you're going to be average. And, uh, you know, here's the thing. I, I The first thing I want to say is I think I have the best offense coordinator in the country and a quarterback guy in, in Jake Morris. He played quarterback for me, and he has a knack for bringing quarterbacks to their best potential. Uh, he coached. Uh, Logan Bertel and back in 2016, who was a national player of the year. So we're sitting in in spring and, you know, Sam Hegeman, who's our number two quarterback right now, is is playing as well as he can play. And we just realized coming out of spring, we didn't know if Sam was the guy that can take us to where we needed to be in the future. And Coach Morris is sitting there saying, Coach, I think the quarterback, starting quarterback, is on this roster right now. And I said, well, who are you talking about? And he said, it's Truman Jules Guard. He's playing defensive back. And so we got through spring, and we sat down as a staff. Truman Jules Guard was going to be one of our top two defensive players returning on the 23 season. And we decided, made the decision to move him to quarterback, looking towards the future as, okay, two years from now, where do we want to be? And can Truman get us there? And we believe that he can. Uh, so Truman worked very hard with Coach Morris all summer long and came out. And to be quite frank, there were some good times and there were some really struggles. You could tell he had not played quarterback in a long time as he played it in high school at Lawrence. And uh, but he just kept getting better and better. And when the bullets were flying, Joey, and he was live, he's very tough to tackle. So what you saw in 23 was either it looked really good or Truman improvised and made plays with his feet. The goal in 24 is for him to make more plays naturally as a quarterback and less plays with his feet. And that way he stays healthy, which he did. Um, but he's just becoming more and more of a pure quarterback. He's a fantastic young man. Uh, he's your leader. He's your best football player. And anytime your best football player is your best leader, you got a chance to be pretty good. Coach, I, I always like to mention the the offensive line too because, it, and, and I understand too, there are times if, if that's not in place, your quarterback's going to have to make some plays with his feet. But talk about the offensive line a little bit just to prepare for the, the rest of the season. Yeah. Uh, you know, I coach the offensive line and I have no problem telling you. Sometimes Truman was making plays last year because he had to. Uh, we had a group coming back in 23 that had played in 22, but they weren't a, quite an experienced group. What they were, what we felt on paper was they were a very uh, intelligent group. It was a very athletic and a very intelligent group. So they had some growing pains at, uh, in 23 as well. We only graduated one starty, starter at center in, in Rocky Juarez, and we returned four starters uh, on this group. And it's so now it's become a very athletic and experienced group. Uh, but I thought that that group just got better and better. I thought they played really well at Louisiana Christian and ran the football. I thought they protected well at uh, at Georgetown. And so I feel very good about this group coming back. I think the leader of the group is, is Tony Kennedy. Tony is, is originally from Arizona. When I got here, I was told he's a, you know, a 6'4", 290 pound, you know, not very aggressive, just a, an average guy. And Tony has gotten better and better. He's in fantastic shape now. He's become the leader of that group. 
And, uh, you know, you throw an Aiden Palmer in there that's that started for two years. And we just we got a very, really experienced group coming back. We're really excited about them. Coach, if we stay with the offense just a, a tad longer, we talked about Jules Gard, and, and I know we could probably spend another five or ten minutes uh, talking about him as well from last season and looking ahead. Uh, from the skill positions, is there anything that we should be looking for in 24 now? As, again, you, you've mentioned uh, kind of almost like a stepping stone process to get from 23 to 24. Yeah, you know, you, you in 23 you lose one of your biggest playmakers at tailback and Rashawn Graves. Uh, Sean could have had another year, but he was ready. And, you know, he, he was he's a father. He's ready to graduate. He walked in May and, it, and is ready to go begin life. So you have to replace anytime you have to replace explosive plays. That's difficult. Uh, what we have in the backfield is we have three guys that we think will get you five yards and won't lose yards. Now, do they have breakaway speed? I don't know. Time will tell. I, I don't I'm not sure, but you never know. I've been wrong there before. Where we really improved skill-wise, Joey, is at the receiver position. That was a huge emphasis for us. Uh, Gavin Greenwood returns an All-American tight end. Um, but really, when you look back a year ago, you, you had Gavin and you had Will Roberts. Will Roberts was a graduate student. He's done. So you have Gavin coming back. But we've surrounded him with some really good young football players. Uh, you know, Adrian Seals out of Eudora is one of the top prospects in the state. Uh, luckily, it's 15 minutes from here, and we were able to keep him in his own backyard. And, uh, you know, so we've surrounded Truman with some really good skill at the receiver position. We have three backs that we think can can run the football very physically, which is what we want to be on offense. And Truman, of course, will be a year better, and his offensive line is, is four starters, fully tested. We feel really good about this group. We're visiting now with Miguel Regalado from Baker, the winningest program in the NAIA. Coach, looking at the other side of the ball, I want to throw a couple of names out there really quickly. Zach Kramer and Cannon Karn. Anyone that had to deal with the Wildcats last year definitely had to make sure that that was a big part of preparing uh, to, to try to get past them on defense. Between the two of them, combined for 177 tackles, 22 of them tackles for loss, I had uh, four fumble recoveries, 10 interceptions between the two of them. And those are names of players who are both coming back for this year. Yes. You know, I, as, as good of a, a quarterback coach as I think Coach Morris is, I think Coach Pauly is just as good with linebackers. He's the linebacker whisperer is what we call him. And, uh, you know, he just has a knack for getting guys. And this is no disrespect to, to, to Zach and to Ken and, of guys that might not run four three forties, they might not be six three, two hundred and ten pounds, and look the part. They just know how to play football, and I think part of that is them, and part of that is Coach Pauly. Coach Pauly, in my opinion, Joey is is the best defense player to ever play at Baker in my time here, and he gets guys to play just like him. And it's kind of crazy how he does it. Cannon has a knack for being around the football. He makes some incredible interceptions as well as uh, plays in the run game. And Kramer can do it all. Uh, Zach is a, you know, he's a 4.0 guy, uh, just knows the entire defense and just knows where to be and when to be there. Uh, so those guys are both back. Cannon has, has dealt with some injuries from the uh, lingering injuries from the 23 season, but he's worked hard this summer to get himself back. And, I don't know if he's going to be ready on game one, but he's going to be ready at some point. And, and so luckily we have depth uh, from good recruiting. And uh, But both those guys are back and should be the leaders of this group. Okay, Coach, we, we talked about there right there in the middle of the field. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the line in the secondary two preparing for 24? Yes, the defensive line we feel is very talented. Where I'm a little concerned is our depth, uh, as everybody is in the country. Um, you know, uh, up front at the defensive end position, we returned two starters in Brian Lane and, and Elijah Malvo. Uh, Elijah started as a true freshman, so he's tested and, and kind of won't be that deer caught in the headlights again. Brian Lane, I think, is poised to have his best season here at, at Baker. Uh, was an MIAA recruit, and uh, we were able to, to keep him here uh, being close from, from Lawrence. Uh, Jalen Smith, my son, I think can has the ability to, to be one of the best defensive linemen in this league if he can stay healthy. Uh, he came with me from Clark and uh, from Clark University. And if, if he's healthy, he's dang good, Joey. The, the, the issue is he hasn't been able to stay healthy. Uh, you know, and next to him is Dylan Gillespie, who's just a man. We call him the menace. He's all over the place. Um, 
you know, he's not a guy that's going to take on run blockers, but he's going to be a guy that's in the backfield. So those four guys, I think, can be as good as anybody in the league. And then we've got to develop some depth early. And the secondary, our two leaders are Deshaun Lewis and Thad Metcalf at the safety positions. Those guys have been starters their entire career here. They're going into their final season. Uh, they know the defense inside and out. They can get everybody lined up. Where we've got to figure out is who are the two corners. We've recruited well. Uh, DJ Johnson, who transferred in uh, in the 23 season, played some, was not in shape when he came to us in 23. So I don't think we've seen his best ball, but he's been here all summer. So I think we're going to see a really good DJ this year. And then we've got some guys that we recruited and I think are going to be really, really uh, battling for that other corner spot, along with a return interest in Pounceau, who's, who's had a great um, summer. So I think on paper, Joey, we have a fantastic defense. I'm a little concerned at depth at every position, except probably linebacker. I think linebacker, we have really fantastic depth everywhere else. It's uh, it's going to be interesting. We need we got to get it figured out pretty quickly. I like something that you, you mentioned, and, and I don't think this is a throwaway comment, by the way, especially where you are in the country. If you're able to snag an MIAA recruit, then uh, that's, a, that's a good thing. That's a, a statement for the program, and I think what you have going on there. Special teams-wise, and Seth Simpson is coming back, and I just wanted to, to read or at least throw these numbers out there. I, I have most of them memorized because they're just so, so incredible. Think about 18 for 22 field goals, 54 of 54 point after. That's 108 points, by the way, 54 by way of field goal, 54 by way of extra points. Those are just some phenomenal numbers. You look at it, and it's, and it's almost not real uh, coming from the special teams. I know that's not the entirety of the special teams, but that, that's a big part of it right there. You know, any time that you can send out your field goal unit and feel 100% confident. Uh, at our level, sometimes, Joey, that unit doesn't get as much attention as it should. Uh, I happen to be a special teams guy. I'm a, I take care of punt. I take care of kickoff return. I take care of PAT field goal. Coach Polly does the, the kickoff team. So we put a lot of emphasis and effort into our teams. And so I'm very proud of the fact, one, there was not any, there were no blocks in the entire 23 season. Uh, Seth Simpson is kind of an, uh, for lack of a better phrase, like a serial killer. He's never high. He's never low. He has his pulse is never raised. Uh, he just goes out and he kicks the football and he might miss one or two like he did last season and he would never know it. And he'll come right back and nail the next one. And uh, he's just incredible. And then you throw in what I think are two or three, probably the best long snappers in, in the league playing for us uh, with Seth Dankenbrain. Uh, the, the snaps are always consistent. The operation is always in 1.35 seconds or less, and he does a fantastic job. We do need to replace our punter. Uh, if I have to say where I have a concern is that punter Kenyon Sanders was a graduate student and was unbelievable for us on our Rangers unit. So we got to figure out who that next guy is. But Special Forces was a big part of it in 23. The season gets underway. It'll be on a September, so uh, September Saturday. You know, not getting into August. A number of programs getting there, and you take on the newcomer, one of the newcomers to the conference. St. Ambrose is going to be coming to town on September seventh and September fourteenth at William Penn. Those are your first two games, and then a couple of games of note in the Heart South. Take on Benedictine. Both of them, by the way, these two games on the road at Atchison at Olathe. Uh, September 28th at Benedictine. That seems to be a little bit early in the season for that matchup. That one Great. always promises to be a good one. And then November 9th at Mid-American Nazarene. And, and that one proved to be, I mean, instrumental in the way things sorted out at the end of the year last year in, in the Heart South. Yeah. You know, to, to begin with St. Ambrose, there's not a lot of familiarity there. Other than the fact we played him as a JV unit at, up at Clark when I was there. Um, so we've got to start fast and, and, and jump them early when they come to list in September. Uh, very, very interesting game at William Penn. You look at William Penn a year ago, and they darn near knocked off Benedictine. Uh, you know, they, they, you know, Coach has, has done a fantastic job there in just one year. So that's a very dangerous football game. Uh, and it's dangerous because I don't want our guys thinking about what you brought up a little bit ago, which is the Benedictine game. Uh, anybody that's at Baker knows Benedictine versus Baker is the game. Um, 
and and you know I, I'm still upset about the way that went down last year. I, you know, and I, I I fully plan on bringing that to our attention on August second when we report to camp. Um, so that's that's a big one in week four, and then you know Mid America is always tough uh, versus Bennett uh, versus Baker. Uh, we we handled them last year, but I think that's a very dangerous football game. I think just like us at Benny, I don't think that they would say they played their best game against us. So, you know, Benny beats us. We beat Mid-America. Mid-America beats Benny in the final game of the year. And that makes us, you know, three-way champs when we go to the playoffs because we're the highest rated team. So it's going to be uh, wild down here in the South. And, uh, you know, bottom line is, I know it's cliche, but we got to start with St. Ambrose and, take one game at a time. Um, but I, I fully uh, plan on making sure our team remembers what happened in that championship game at Benny last year. Okay, coach. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this. I'm going to talk about that matchup many more times on the channel, but if I'm ever visiting with any of your players, I won't bring it up till September 28th. Okay. Or, or the week before there we go. We appreciate that. So, but, but yes, we'll talk about it many more times here on the channel between now and September 28th. I'm sure. Coach Miguel Regalado, thank you so much, sir, for taking time with us today. Previewing the Baker Wildcats, we will be following the Wildcats throughout the season, obviously when things get underway. First meeting ever against St. Ambrose, that's on September 7th for all the fans that are going to be there in town. Coach, again, thank you so much. We, we enjoy having you here on the Summit. First time for you to be here on the channel, and I'm very grateful for it. Thank you for all you do for our sport, Joey. We appreciate it.